Okay, welcome to your next project. So this was this is a pretty simple project, at least in terms of the JavaScript. It's only like five lines or so. Basically, we just need to add an event listener to this icon right here. And once we click it, we're gonna we're gonna toggle an active class, and it's active right now. But when I click it, you'll see what happens is a couple things really. This container here, the nav shrinks, the links. start to rotate and then they ultimately disappear from setting the opacity to zero and then the x does a rotation and then turns into two lines okay so it's a pretty cool effect and you could use this on any website or application um it, we're going to be doing mostly css here we, as you can see we have quite a few transitions that are going to uh come into play when we toggle the active class which is what we're doing when we click this All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, we're going to get started on our animated navigation project. So I just have my boiler boilerplate here, my project starter, and I just included the dribble link to the graphic in case you're interested. I also wanted to give them credit. So we'll start off here with the title animated navigation, and the HTML is going to be pretty simple. So we want to get rid of that and have a nav tag that's going to wrap everything. Now, the way that this animation is going to work is when we click this, this is in the state of active. So basically, we'll have a class of active on the nav. When we click that in the JavaScript, it's going to remove that class and we have a bunch of transitions to give it that effect. Okay, we have this stretching, we have this go disappears, the opacity Also you can see the links are rotating as well and the x the lines turn or the x turns into lines. So we're going to add a bunch of transitions for those. But this nav tag is going to start with a class of active because we want it to be open when it starts. And we'll give this an ID of nav as well to grab onto it in the JavaScript. So in here let's add our UL and then our LI with an A tag that just goes nowhere. say home and then we'll have four links this next one will be works and then we'll do about and then we'll do contact okay underneath the ul we're going to have a button so this button is going to have a class of icon and it give it an id of toggle okay so this this button is this right here the x but inside here you see how we have two lines right So we want these two lines. So I'm going to do a class of line and we want two of these. So we'll add that. Now we need a way to differentiate these because they're going to be rotating differently in the transition. So let's call this one line 1 and this one line 2. And that should be it for the HTML. So this is what it's going to look like, very ugly. So let's jump into our styling and we're going to use a different font here. We just want CSS and then replace this with m u l i mully mully i don't know how to pronounce it and then we'll add that here okay now for the background we're going to use we're going to put a solid color here but then under it we'll do a linear gradient and i'm putting both just in case linear gradient isn't uh isn't supported so this will be hexadecimal and it'll be e a f b f f okay so like a very light blue and then we'll have a background image and for this we're going to use a linear gradient and we'll do the direction will be to bottom and then we'll use this color here so I'm going to paste in that color. We want that at 0% and then we'll put a comma here. We'll have we'll paste in that color again and we want it to go to 50. So from 0% to 50% we'll have that color. And then we want it we want this color, this blue which is 5 uh 529 0 F9 and we want that to be from 50% to 100%. So just grab this and right here we want this to go to 100% if i save that we get that split color look now let's see what else do we have here do we want display flex we don't need column display column and get rid of that 
We can also get rid of the overflow hidden. Uh, oops, overflow hidden. And I'm just gonna add margin zero. I probably should have put that in the boilerplate. So that's it for the body. Now let's start on the nav here. So let's take the nav tag and let's add a background. We'll add a background color of white. Okay, and I'm just gonna add 20 pixels padding all the way around. And the width of this is gonna be 80%, but that's in, I'm sorry, 80 pixels, but that's in the non-active state. So basically this, when it's active, it's gonna be 350 pixels and it's active to begin with. Okay, we have the class active here. So let's just jump down here real quick and say, if it has the active class on it, then let's set the width to 350 pixels like that. All right, and then I just want to center everything here. So the nav will go ahead and display flex. We want to align items to the center and we want to justify content to the center. And let's actually add a border radius of three pixels. And we're also gonna have a box shadow. So for the X offset, we'll do zero. The Y will do two pixels. The blur will do five pixels. And the color will be RGBA black with a 0.3 transparency. So it just looks like it's slightly coming off the page. Now, when we remove the active class, so if I just manually get rid of this here, you can see it goes, it shrinks down. Now I wanna add a transition on that. I don't want it to just flick right to, you know, smaller or bigger. I wanna have a nice smooth transition. So let's add a transition. So this will take whatever property we wanna add the transition to, which in this case is the width the duration I want it to last, which is 0.6 seconds, and the effect, which is linear, it's gonna be the same speed throughout. All right, so now let's start to do the, the uh, UL, the unordered list, so we'll say nav UL. And for this, I'm gonna display flex, which makes it a flex container, makes all the list items flex items that will turn into a row. We wanna get rid of any bullets, so list style type, we're gonna set that to none. And then let's go ahead and just remove any default margin and padding. Oops. Okay. And then what else do we wanna do here? So the width, the width for this, the initial width is gonna be zero. And the reason for that is when, when it's not active, we want the width of it to be zero. All right, now we want to add a transition for the width here too. So let's say uh, transition on the width and it's gonna be 0 0.6 seconds linear. Now when it's active, let's say when the nav tag has a class of active, which it does now, we want the width of the UL to be 100%. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna put UL here. Okay, so we'll have the width at 100%. And then, I think that's all we want there. So let's do the list items. So we have our nav UL list items. And remember, we want, we want them to have that rotate effect. So what we'll do is we'll use transform and we can use rotate on the Y axis and start here with zero degrees. And I'm gonna change that for the act for the um, active state. But we'll go ahead and add that. And by default, the opacity is gonna be zero, which is gonna make it just disappear. And that's fine because we only want it to show when it has the active state. And then I wanna add a transform, I'm sorry, a transition for the transform property for the rotate because we want it to have that smooth rotation. You can see the, the LIs have that rotate. And also for the opacity, you can see how they fade in and out nice and smooth. So what we'll do is add transition on transform. And let's do 
0.6 seconds linear and then I'll also add it on to the opacity property which will be 0.6 seconds duration and linear. All right and then let's see so when it's active we should see it so let's say nav active and we want to target the li when the nav is active and set the opacity to one so we can see it and then we also want to set the transform to uh, rotate y and we're going to do 360 degrees we just want to do a, a full 360 spin you can see when i save it actually shows us the transition or the rotation i should say all right now the links don't look too good so let's make those look a little better so we'll say nav ula and we want to position these to be relative and the color of the links i'm going to set to black and i'm going to get rid of any underline so text decoration what is this text decoration we want that to be none and then i'm just going to separate them with a margin on the right and left of 10 pixels okay that looks much better All right, so I think what we'll do is stop here and then in the next video we'll go ahead and style the icon or the button, the button with the class of icon, put the lines in there and we're going to add the rotation transform for that and then we'll add the javascript with the event listener. All right, so we'll get to that next. All right, in the last video we went ahead and created most of the styling. We have our background gradient, we have our little nav bar here now we want to do the icon which is a button with the class of icon so let's go ahead and do that we'll add an icon and we're going to set the background color to white which is the same as its as its uh, container there and then we want to get rid of that border as well so we'll set that border to zero. so now we essentially can't see anything um, and then we're going to set the cursor to a pointer so that when we hover over it we get that cursor we want to set any padding to zero we're going to position this relative because the lines inside are going to be positioned absolute and we're going to set the height and the width both to 30 pixels all right we can't see anything just yet um, one thing that i want to get rid of is this outline on the focus state so we'll say icon colon focus and we want to set the outline to zero. okay now we want to style the lines remember there's two divs inside the button with the class of line so we want to style that so let's say icon line and we'll set the background color and we'll set that to hexadecimal 529 f9 and we want to set the height so they're just going to be two lines so we'll set two pixels to the height so we have two two pixel lines now we want to position this to be absolute and actually let's put our width as well so the width is going to be 20 pixels and we position absolute now we want to move this from let's say from the top 10 pixels and from the left 5 pixels so this is the top line now both of them are in the same exact spot right now because they both have the the line the class of line which we just put in the same position so what i'm going to do is right underneath let's say icon and then we want to take line 2 and we want to move it down so we can actually use auto for the top and from the let's say from the bottom 10 pixels okay so now we have two separate lines now up here uh, let's see what else do we want to add we want to add a transition actually we'll wait we'll do the transition after let's do the rotate so remember when we click when it goes from an x to the two lines we want them to rotate so we're going to go down here and they need to rotate in different directions so we want to say nav and when it's active 
uh, we want to take icon and we want line one first. So let's take line one and let's add a transform so that we can rotate and the degrees is we're going to do a negative 765 degree rotation and we also need to add translate y for the positioning and that's going to be 5.5 pixels all right and then what I'll do is just copy this whole thing and this is going to be for line 2 and this is going to be positive 765 degrees and then this will be negative because we want them to go you know in a different way so save that and now we have an x now when they when it changes we need to have a transition so let's go uh, back up to here to the line class and let's add a transition we want to put it on the transform property everything is 0.6 seconds of course you can change that if you'd like linear and you can see when i save and that's applied you can see the uh, rotation so the last thing we have to do now is the javascript which is very very it's only i think like five five six lines basically we just need an event listener on this button so that when we click it the active class is toggled so let's go to our script and let's say const toggle and set that to document dot and we're going to use get element by id to pull in the id of toggle which is the um, button right so we have this id of toggle so we're grabbing that we also want to grab the nav by this id so let's say const nav document dot get element by id and we want the nav Okay, and then what we're going to do is take the toggle and we're going to add an event listener onto it because we want to listen for a click. So we pass in click and then we have a function which you can write out like this or you can use an arrow function which is what I prefer so we can get rid of that and then just add an arrow. Okay, and then we're going to take the nav and we're simply going to toggle the active class meaning that if it's applied it'll remove it, if it's not applied it will add it. So let's take class list and class list you can do add if you want to add a class, you can do remove to remove one or you can do toggle which is what we want. And we want to toggle the active class. All right. Now with arrow functions, if we only have one single line like this in the function body, we don't even need these curly braces. We can just do that. I mean, you don't have to, but I don't know, it's, it's shorter, it's cleaner. So let's try this out. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click this. And there we go. So all the transitions are applied, including the rotation of, of the icon, the rotation of the rotation and the opacity of the links. You can see they spin and they fade in and out. The width of the, uh, the container here. So all these transitions are applied when that class is added and removed. All right, so that's pretty much it. Pretty simple project. Um, you could integrate this into your website or your app, your mobile app, whatever it is that um, that you want to use it with. But that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.